Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about greatest common factors, or GCFs, and we're going to look at how to factor by grouping. First, let's review what a factor is. A factor is when you have two or more numbers that you multiply together in order to get another number. If you look at the factors of 24, you can start with 2 times 12, but notice that 12 isn't prime, so you can factor 12 even further. 12 factors to 2 times 6. So 24 could factor to 2 times 2 times 6. But again, 6 isn't prime, so you can factor 24 even further. You can factor it all the way to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. This would be called prime factoring. And sometimes when you're factoring for polynomials, you'll need to prime factor until you get more comfortable with factors and what they have in common. A common factor would be any monomial common to each term in the polynomial, but we care more about this GCF, the greatest common factor. This is the greatest coefficient or number and the highest degree, the largest number of variables you can factor out. So it's what each term has in common, the most that they have in common. Let's look at a couple of examples. These first three examples, we need to factor out the greatest common factor. In example one, we have two terms. Our first term is 12x to the fourth, and our second term is negative 36x squared. Now notice that we can factor this first term as one times 12 times x, 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 and x. We have four x's there for the x to the fourth. Yes, the 12 could be factored further, but I notice my second term is 36, and 36 has a 12 in it. So when I factor that second term, I have negative one to make sure I keep that negative sign, and 36 is three times 12. And then x squared is our x times our x. Now to find the GCF, I wanna compare these factors and see what do they have in common. And notice they have this 12 and they both have two X's or X squared in common. So our GCF is going to be 12 X squared. I factor out that 12 X squared and then we look at what gets left behind for each term. Well, the first term we have the one and x times x left behind. Well, that's the same as x squared. And in the second, we have negative one times three, or negative three. So here we factored out the GCF of 12x squared, and we're left with a binomial of x squared minus three. Let's look at example two. First term is eight, a squared b cubed and this factors to 2 times 4 times a times a b cubed is 3 b's multiplied together the second term is positive it's a 12 a squared times b and I could do 3 times 4 for 12 here notice I did 3 times 4 because I identified that I already had a 4 for my first term and then a squared is a times a, and then I have a b. So what do these two terms have in common? Well, they have the four, the a squared, and the b. So my GCF is four a squared b. And then we go back to each term and see what got left behind. The first term we had two, and b times b, or 2b squared. And in the second, we just had this positive 3. So there, we factored that second binomial. Now, look at example 3. Example 3, we have 2x squared times a binomial 2x minus 3. And then our second term, is that same binomial 2x minus 3. Well, they have that binomial in common, so that binomial 
2x minus 3 is our GCF. And then when we factor that out, what got left behind? Well, the first term, we had 2x squared. And the second term, it doesn't look like anything was left behind, right? Well, there is. Remember, we always have that invisible 1. It's our placeholder. So we have a 1 left behind, which holds the spot for that second term. Because we factored two terms, we should still end up with two terms. Now, let's look at how to factor out a negative. And here, we're really just going to factor out a negative 1. And we're going to do it term by term. If I pull out a negative 1 from the first term, I would be left with an x squared. And the second, if I pull out a negative 1, I have 10x. And the last, if I pull out a negative 1, I have a negative 7. So if I factor out that negative 1 from each of these, so I pull out the negative 1, the negative 1, the negative 1, what got left behind? The first term, I have an x squared. The second term, I have a positive 10x. And last, I have a negative 7. Now, if you just compare the given trinomial to the second trinomial, notice that pulling out a negative 1, really what happened are the signs changed for each term. Okay, now that we're comfortable with finding a GCF and factoring it out, let's look at how to factor by grouping. Factoring by grouping uses associative and distributive properties to factor four-term polynomials into the product of two binomials. If you ever come across a problem that you have to factor and it has four terms, that should scream to you factor by grouping. There are three steps. And we're going to go through each of these steps for each of these two examples below. So here in example one, the first step is to factor out the GCF. So what's our GCF? What do all four of these terms have in common? None, nothing. There is no GCF, so we're good. Step two, we're going to factor out the GCF from the first pair of terms and then factor out the GCF from the second pair of terms. This is that grouping part. So I group the first two and I group the second two. When I look at the first two, a, b plus b, what do they have in common? A b. If I factor out the b, I'm left with a plus 1. Now we look at that second grouping, I have 2a plus 2, and they have a positive 2 in common. I factor that out and I have a plus 1 as the binomial left behind. Well now look, I have, I have two terms, and these two terms have the binomial a plus 1 in common. So if I factor out a plus 1, that first term, I left behind the b. And the second term, I left behind the plus 2. So this four-term polynomial fully factors into these two binomials, a plus 1 and b plus 2. Let's do another example and go through each of the steps. Step 1, GCF. Do we have a GCF here? We do not have a GCF. So step two is to look at our first grouping. That would be x cubed minus x squared. The GCF here is x squared. When I factor that out, I'm left with x minus 1. Remember, I'm factoring two terms. I pull out a GCF, I should still have two terms. So watch for those hidden invisible ones. Second grouping negative 3x plus 3. Hmm, what can we factor out? There's definitely a 3, right? 
But remember our goal. Our goal is to end up with a binomial that the first term and the second term have in common. So what do I need to factor out to get x minus 1 as the binomial left behind? Well, it needs to be a negative 3. You see, negative 3x, and this would be a positive 3. Now that they both have that binomial of x minus 1 in common, we factor out the x minus 1, and we have the second binomial of x squared minus 3. So the big takeaway, if you see a polynomial with four terms and you need to factor it, grouping, factor by grouping. And the ordering doesn't matter. Group the first two terms together, find the GCF factor, use that factor to help you determine how to factor the second grouping if you see that it's a little tricky. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I hope that you will go check out my other math videos for more help.